we are on the road for the podcast today. Where are we headed, Justin? Oh, it's a secret road trip. We can't tell you, Tim. What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're really just trying to take you on the road. That's all that we can do here. <laughs> on the road again? On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. You don't know You know where we're going, then? Uh, maybe, but I, I can't say. Otherwise, I'd have to kill you. You need to get out more, Tim. It reminds me of those mystery trips. Have you ever heard of that? Like, oh, you get on an airplane, you don't know where you're going. Have you ever done anything like that? No. Would you? I don't like surprises. Okay. Day. Me either. No? no? I would totally do it. My wife's like, don't you dare. <laughs> I wouldn't even know what to... I'm like, they'll probably tell you at least what you're going to expect weather-wise. Yeah, you might end up in Nebraska or something well, crazy, though. I bet I could find... Uh, a brewery or something in Nebraska. Even worse, Mitchell, South Dakota. Oh, don't uh, end up there. <laughs> but if you do, give me a call. Yeah. At the Corn Palace. No, not the Corn Palace. Mm-hmm. And then uh, get back on the plane, I guess. <laughs> what oh. about the Tim Burns boyhood home? Yet? Oh, yeah. We're working on getting a, a brown sign in the front lawn. <laughs> Childhood home. What are you laughing about back there? I don't know. I'm just trying to imagine you in Mitchell, South Dakota. Uh Okay, well, I do know we're headed down 23, so find out where we end up in moments here on the podcast. What's she talking about? So which one of us is having a beer with their Wednesday lunch? (laughs) That'd be me. You guys are, you got to answer to a higher power. Up the caffeine it's just the vodka. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we've got it all figured out. Having some lunch here at uh, at Cheers in Raymond because we are going to go pay a visit to St. John's. John's. Woo! They didn't tell me where uh, where we were going. It's a block or two away. I know because you guys uh, come over here and your wives come to preach now and then yeah. and so we're just gonna go check it out and give them some love yeah. and who are we <laughs> this is jess she owns shares yay so i'm becky i just work with her a lot love uh-huh. her kids. well thanks for having us thanks, Anytime. thanks yeah. for tolerating this uh this podcast beyond the altar we're having some cheers it's amazing John's Lutheran Church in Raymond. Raymond. Why are we here? Because we want to show you around inside. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> Why do you ask questions we don't know how to ask questions to? Uh, they got an organ, right? They do. You want to play it? Yeah. Maybe we can... I could stand in the pulpit, pretend to preach. No. Is anybody here? Not you. No. I listen. I listen. Okay. Let's go inside. All right. Ah. Here we are. Yeah. You've been here before, Tim? For some reason, ham is coming to mind. Uh, <laughs> do they still do the ham supper? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Every uh, year. Early like, if I remember, that's like early November, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. Better than Vinci's Lutefisk, right? Oh. For sure. I mean, no offense. I'll take ham over Lutefisk <laughs> any same day. Same people do. <laughs> same people. <laughs> This reminds me so much of my relative's country church out in rural South Dakota. The, uh, the altar and everything. Even the curved balcony. Look at that up there. It's beautiful. So here we are, as the congregation would be in the pews at St. John's Lutheran Church in Raymond, Minnesota. Now, uh, tell us how the association with Benji and St. John's came about. Yeah, so St. John's, their pastor that they had had for a while, retired, and they were looking for a new pastor, and we uh, we were available. We had enough pastors at Benji that we wanted to basically provide help for other congregations, and what started off as kind of like, well, maybe we can help out a little bit in the you know interim, turned into what's now, what, four, four and a half years? Yeah. I like to exaggerate, time. so, yeah. yeah. I think it's only been three, but it's been longer than three. (laughs) How has Vinji been so uh, fortunate to have a surplus of pastors when, and not just churches, but businesses in uh, rural Minnesota, rural America are having a hard time finding people to work? 
Yeah, I mean, I think we've got such a really good thing going at Vinci. There's a lot of excitement, energy, and um, and that's reflected in some of the programming that we do. And uh, people are happy to support something they see uh, value in. And so we've been fortunate enough to have two full-time pastors, a half-time pastor, and sometimes we, plus. Yeah third full-time pastor for all. People want to work with us, right? We're fun. Yeah. Right? I was just going to say, <laughs> you're being you? too humble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why are you playing it's organ there, right? Oh, because of YouTube. Exactly. No question exactly. about it. Right. it. has nothing to do with the money <laughs> or the love of playing, yeah. which by the way, I see an organ up there. Yeah, you're yeah. going to have to wait. Yeah. Can, yeah. We do, can I play it later? Mm, maybe. Depends yeah. how good you are in the podcast. Yeah. St. John's. There's a lot of those. There's a St. John's University. Hmm. Why so many things, St. John? Who was this St. John? I don't like St. John, actually. Why well, don't you like he speaks John? very highly of you. Yeah, right? he does. He's <laughs> like that. Uh, no, I don't like John the Baptist. I think uh, I've done this gig, I think, you know, or shtick, like maybe. Although I really don't like him. Every church I've ever preached at, like when, like, baptism of Jesus stuff comes around in the Bible text and we're supposed to preach on John the Baptist baptizing Jesus. I always make it well known that I do not like John the Baptist because I don't think he understood who Jesus really was. Oh. John the Baptist was all about the rules and if you if you don't do X, Y, and Z, we're going to burn you kind of thing. And I don't think that's what Jesus is about. I don't think he understood the, the grace and the forgiveness and the love of God. John the Baptist needed Jesus to, to set him straight, basically. Uh, is that the St. John that we're referring to? Uh, yeah, that's all great, Justin, but I don't think what? that's the St. John. I'm <laughs> pretty not? sure this is St. John the Evangelist who uh, wrote the that guy. Gospel. That's what I was going to say. He's okay. Jesus' the fourth beloved gospel. disciple <laughs> and not a rule follower. So, no, uh, you never know what kind of trivia sticks in my head. Was he not the only disciple that died a natural death? That's mm. what they say. So, Because he got, what, they sent him to the island. Yeah. Others were either crucified or stabbed. Some, sometimes upside down. He speared. Yep. Mm, Wasn't there one that was chopped? I think he there was, was one that was filleted, actually. Yeah. <laughs> was that yeah. Simon? Yeah. Was he? Yeah. <laughs> it's bad. It's a Much rather get time. the island vacation. Right. 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 Yeah. I know. There's word that there's actually kind of a reverse migration happening when you talk about not just rural churches, but rural towns, rural businesses. Uh, that people say, oh, okay, we had enough of this city thing here, and now we can work anywhere we want. Why not have it be in a cozy town like a Raymond and a Wilmer? Where did I forget? You were Alaska. Yeah. It's hard to get more. It's. It pretty, just seems remote. remote. Is that wrong? Place. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I. We actually hosted a conference at Vinci a few years back, where this guy, keynote speaker, talked about this phenomenon that there are a lot of people who get tired of big city life and the cost is so high and there are a lot of people that would like to live somewhere where they have a little more space and a little bit more slow pace of life and, um, and I think there's a lot to offer in rural America. Mm -hmm. What was the population of your Alaskan town? So it's actually kind of deceiving. I think it's 2,000 people in the town, 2, but 000. we had a thousand student high school, so it's really like 10,000 oh. surroundings. Wow. Like a regional center. Yeah, yeah. Like, kind of like Wilmer. Like Wilmer. So, and what was your hometown? I grew up in Wasika. It's about 9,000 okay. population. It was not a regional center. You had to go to like Owatonna or Mankato to watch a movie or get quality, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, there's some good, good restaurants, but only a couple. Justin has already trashed my hometown of Mitchell, <laughs> South Dakota. I don't even, I think it's somewhere around 20. Isn't that about what Wilmer mm -hmm. yeah. is? 20,000. So yeah, that was small enough. I love visiting Minneapolis. Could, I couldn't mm. live there. Yeah. Well, we witnessed this on our mysterious ride over when we had to sit for a train. <laughs> <laughs> Stoplights, trains, traffic, I can't yeah. do it. Oh, yeah. No, and I lived in Atlanta before moving to Wilmer, like going anywhere was 45 minutes, right? And so you just spend so much of your day stuck in traffic. So I can put up with the train every once in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, I don't want to reveal any secrets here. We can cut this if we have to. But <laughs> do you have aspirations for a bigger church, a big, like one of the big performance type? churches that it's more of a concert hall than, than a, a church than like this 
a big mega church? Or you? I don't know. I mean, uh, no, uh, I don't think so. It, it it strikes me like the the key to church, and I think what makes St. John such a great congregation is the community, right? And so like when you can walk in and people know you and you kind of have your little role in that community of faith or, you know, that's what I think makes church wonderful. And when it gets to the point that it's so big that you're walking in and people, you know, don't know if you're a stranger or a first time visitor or you've been there every year for 10 years, like that's... I remember hearing this thing about pastors a long time ago about uh, people won't care what you know until they know you love them. And I think the same is true of churches. Uh, If you come into a church and you feel unwelcome and all that, it's not going to go well. And so that's something I think St. John's typifies is just this uh, wonderful hospitality and love that they share. And if you come in, everybody will treat you like royalty Mm -hmm. and care about you. I did read an article, and again, I I think it applies to many businesses, but it happened to be about churches, you know, oh, are we losing members? They think that this change is an opportunity now for churches, for businesses, and one of the greatest strengths of a small church and or business is the sense of community and the closeness. Right now there's there's so few, and I think this is true for other businesses too, right? Like trying to hire employees is so hard. There's so few pastors and so many churches looking. Like every pastor that's out there, you know, is pretty much going to be where they want to be mm. because if they weren't, there's so many other choices for us to go to. Like we could both be in St. Paul if we wanted to right now. I don't think we want to. I don't yeah. want to. I, I remember one of the big pieces for our family in moving was we wanted a place that had some diversity. I want my kids to know other kids who are different from them, who have a different walk of life, maybe different culture. And that's the beauty, I think, in Wilmer of that there's both of those things. You've got rural America, but also this culturally diverse population. Yeah. And my kids get to experience all that they could. Right here. Mm-hmm. I think statistically Wilmer's more diverse than Minneapolis, you yeah. know, so yeah. you get that diversity, yeah. but you don't have to have the population uh, in order to get it. And now, you know, speaking of businesses having a hard time finding people to work, yeah, I, I think the, the one exception seems to be radio broadcasting. Mm-hmm. They got so many people, they're just like dumping that experienced people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Weird. Yeah, you still have to be good at something yeah. to keep a job, though, so. <laughs> That's right. Lose out. <laughs> good God. So in that article I was reading, I always have notes, it says in a a smaller church that's 100 or fewer each week in the pews, they have higher levels of member commitment. You agree? I would agree with that. Yeah, for sure at St. John's. They have a greater percentage of member participation in weekly worship. Ushers, readers, choirs. Totally. Or just showing up. <laughs> showing yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, they give more money per person than the, the big giant churches. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I can't even speculate on that. They're more likely to volunteer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So small rural churches can survive and thrive if they focus on blank and maybe again it goes for any business but uh, I think I would just repeat like that community theme I mean everything you just said is true and I think that's because people have a sense of ownership however what I do see in some small churches that can't thrive is that it becomes so much like this is our family's church and no one else is really welcome Ooh. here. And so, yeah, you can come, but you're not really making decisions or getting to be a part of the church. Um, and those are the congregations, I think, that slowly are just, you know, with every generation, there's fewer of them. And, um, and then it just becomes more of like a, a, a family chapel, uh, mm. is a church. I, I think both Benji and St. John's exemplify this, that there is a care for the community around and a willingness to try new things. And I think for St. John's, it was a risk to join this relationship with Benji. They weren't sure is the big church going to swallow them up or that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but they get to be them. Benji gets to be them. 
and they <laughs> we get can, to be both. Yeah, yeah, and and they all have this kind of love of the community around and want to serve, and I think that is why both churches are doing quite well right now. Mm-hmm. Whether a, a church or say a small town bar tavern, you know the feeling when you walk in and the regulars are there and they look at you. Mm-hmm. This guy. As long as you don't sit in Gladys's pew, because if you do that, you oh yeah, know, right. Because yeah. like, uh, I play down in Montevideo, and from the balcony, I know right where mm-hmm. everybody exactly. sits. I know exactly what the back of their head looks mm-hmm. like too. How does the relationship work between Vinji and Saint John's, and or do you both kind of alternate coming over here to preach? Yeah, um, I don't think it's exactly 50-50, but uh, between Justin and I, we also have our wives have been preaching, uh, and then pastors. Who are pastors? Who are pastors? (laughs) Yeah, four pastors. It's pretty nice to have four pastors, plus uh, our wonderful visitation pastor, Andres. Mm -hmm. We all kind of take our turns and seems to be received well, whoever is yeah. at each place. And usually whatever sermon series that we're doing at the time is at both congregations. And so a lot of times, you know, Dane might be here at St. John's on the first Sunday of the month preaching a sermon while I'm up at Vinji on that Sunday preaching a sermon. And then the next week we just switch. Same sermon, different place. Ah. Although, like, we have to tweak them sometimes. Yep. I think, like, it's easy to write you know, for a congregation where it's almost like take that paragraph out, bring a different paragraph in. Or it's a little hard to preach on Christmas Eve, <laughs> on New Year's Eve. Yeah. Or, or yeah in church. No, it doesn't always work out. Yeah. So I keep, like, from our perspective, the organ is sitting right over there. And it looks like a dandy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's been pretty well behaved today so far. I think so. Yeah. You're going to let me play? A little, just a little Should bit. We? Some okay. little piece of a, a hymn. We have. Better be a good one. I'm going to go dig around and find something. So that's Beyond the Altar here live from St. John's Lutheran Church in Raymond, Minnesota. You play a, a, a little, little bit, bit, I think. A little bit. So give away what you got. All right. So him. Take it out with that other little uh, ditty you were oh, playing yeah. earlier. Right, here. I'll try here. We'll yeah, watch for us doing. on uh, Facebook and YouTube, Beyond the Altar from Vinji Lutheran and St. John's Lutheran. <laughs> Who says there's an organist shortage? <laughs> see, see. Perfect. Oh, that'll work.